There's an old saying in painting, either feature the sky or the landscape, but don't do both. So I thought it would be fun to do a watercolor that features a sky. I painted this harbor in Cape Cod, Massachusetts at sunset a number of years ago, and often use it to teach the wet and wet technique in my classes and workshops. It's a great subject for today's theme. In this video, we'll practice our skies and cloud shapes. We'll start by wet blending orange, red, and blue for a colorful sky. Then at the right moment, when the paper is at the moist stage, we'll put in some soft edge clouds that leads the viewer's eyes into the composition. We'll mix up some Payne's gray for the pier that's in shadow and vary its color slightly as we mass it in. Finally, I'll give you a few tips on how to quickly handle the vertical pilings using different brushes. Across the screen, you'll see a list of colors that we'll be using for this painting. Before you try this video, I suggest you watch it all the way through and then re-watch it as you paint, pausing as needed. I always like to start with a little inspiration from artists whom I admire. Henry Pember Smith understood the old adage and kept his sky simple in his watercolor landscape. The wash progresses in color from a light violet to a warm yellow along the horizon. The landscape is featured and loaded with detail. He skillfully uses atmospheric perspective to create distance in the work. The rugged terrain provides the impetus for the piece. On the contrary, William Trost Richards' watercolor on the inlet Atlantic City, New Jersey, features a dramatic sky. Although there's a lot going on in the landscape, he keeps it simple, using just a few values so it doesn't overwhelm. Look at the direction and rhythm in the cloud forms, and also notice the letter Z design. It really leads your eyes into the composition. With these images in mind, let's begin. When we paint a landscape, we either feature the sky or we feature the landscape, but we don't do both. This painting is going to be all about the sky, so we'll keep the landscape simple. We're going to paint our sky wet and wet, so we'll start by wetting the entire sheet of paper. The clear part of the sky is lightest in value and the most colorful part of the sky. There's a variation in color that goes from cadmium orange to cadmium scarlet and finally to Windsor blue. We'll drop in all three of those colors into the wet paper. Roll the board around to blend all the colors evenly, and then pour off the excess water and color. Wipe up the excess paint along the edges of the picture to prevent a back run as the paper begins to dry. I missed a few spots along the top of the picture, so I'll re-wet that part of the sky with my wash brush. And again, use a paper towel to absorb the excess water along the top edge of the picture. 
The bay is relatively calm, so the sky is reflected into it like a mirror. We'll repeat the same colors that we just used in the sky and put them into the surface of the water. Put these reflected colors into the areas of the bay where they relate to their locations in the sky. And we'll roll the board around again to blend the colors evenly. I'll readjust the clamp so that the paper lays flat and level. The paper should be at the moist stage of wetness, which means the shine has just begun to disappear. The clouds are in shadow and are a darker silhouette against the light sky. I'll mix French ultramarine blue, cadmium red, and a tiny touch of ivory black for its color. Load up the brush with this mostly blue color and dab it into a paper towel to remove the excess water. At this point, we want to add only paint and not extra water to the moist paper. I'll start in the part of the sky that's a little drier than the rest, which in this case is the upper left hand corner of the sky. Try to vary the size and shapes of the clouds for a realistic look. The clouds at the top of the sky can angle slightly downwards. As we paint the clouds that are closer to the horizon, paint them more level and straight going across. And again, vary the sizes and shapes of the clouds for best results. I'm painting these clouds on an oblique to lead the viewer's eyes into the composition. I try to organize my clouds in a Z pattern. I also try to thrust the viewer's eyes across the sky in three different directions.
the bank of clouds way off into the distance gets very horizontal and level. You can also make these clouds a little bluer and slightly lighter in value. I'll use the panes gray to cover the white parts of the boat that are also in shadow. Match up the clouds with their reflections in the water. The value of the reflection can be a little darker.